Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Good evening for those who are watching live tonight. My name is Joshua Koko, and this, of course, is the Hard Dog Podcast. And now, <laughs> guess what? We are at number 14. Number 14 is a big number for me, actually. And uh, But it is what it is. We are here at also at studios right here in Varadri. And ladies and gentlemen, we are proudly sponsored by Esomat Hypermarket. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, the t-shirts are officially out. I kept saying it throughout the week that we had something awesome, some breaking news for you. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The t-shirts are here in many colors, black, white, and even red, like the one I'm wearing, which is my very favorite, by the way. At only 35,000 in Ghana shillings, you can grab yourself a uh, t-shirt of Hard Dog Podcast, what I'm wearing right now, in so many sizes. Just make an order. Even for kids, we have the t-shirts as well. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Well, beginning with our good, downright ugly of the particular week, last week, ladies and gentlemen, we had something fantastic called the Reggae Meets Duluka. Now, last week on Saturday, 28th of December, um, I mean of January, we actually had the very first edition of the Reggae Meets Duluka Festival at Coco Palm, organized by radio legend and lover of reggae music, Oterul Vergas. Now, however much the event was a huge and a very unique idea, probably most people are saying that the implementation was extremely, extremely poor. Now, Many fans left the event very unhappy for so many reasons. First of all, the organizers started the event with reggae music, yet many fans expected Deluca to be the very first expressed during the daytime. And then they were also claimed that reggae music was given unnecessarily too much time. In that regard, Deluca was given very little time, yet people had so much fun with Deluca. And finally, uh, which was one of, I think, the worst of them all, they had an unplanned performance by local artists. And uh, at the real time, when we're actually supposed to be having music, people just to music they actually had performances for artists like jj suru like tony bleaks and virus one stone now so many people did not actually expect these guys to be there because the advertisement was not done for these guys to be there and i spoke to one of the event organizers that is uh, uh, kim nazatinga and he told me that actually these guys performing was not on the original plan now where people are supposed to be vibing and enjoying music now so many people decided to leave the event and going to finish the night somewhere else but that is it and i hope that next time we can improve from what we see here now let's go national a little bit ladies and gentlemen the uganda civil aviation authority ucaa has in a very unexpected manner backtracked on its earlier notice banning the taking of photos and recording of videos actually at entebbe international airport in a statement released on a thursday night UCCA said that the ban applies to only sensitive areas at the airport where videography and photography are prohibited. Now, the ban came after videos circulated on social media showing the airport's staff allegedly taking bribes from the public. This ban attracted so much uproar from the public and especially on social media, on Twitter. A lot of people were saying this is probably done so that the people at UCCA or in Tebe can hide their dirty games and uh, that's what they say. Now, the aviation body however, said that taking photos and recording videos in other areas will not be prohibited. But as usual, many Ugandans went on Twitter and they photoshopped themselves near actually the sign that said that uh, don't take photos here. Many people photoshopped themselves there, including Sami Manini. You remember that guy? Ryan Z, Ryan Z. He also put himself there as well. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, Cinderella Sanyu. Yes, big news coming today is that Cinderella Sanyu is actually pregnant. That is uh, Cindy Baby, the king herself, has officially announced that she is pregnant again thanks to her husband, West Nile's own filmmaker and uh, movie actor, Prince Joel Okoyo Atiku. Now, the couple welcomed their very first baby at Prime Care Hospital in January of last year, 2022. But she thanked Okoyo, saying in her own words, Okoyo, I thank you for the job you're doing. I love him so much. I, I want him to know that I love him so much. I appreciate him for the father. He has been amazing and inspiration to me every single day. I love you and we wish you, the Okuyos, all the best in this particular venture. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get away from here, I would like to briefly tell you something about the man himself that is Lastborn now. Lastborn actually has a new jam that is out and it's called I Don't Know featuring the lyricist and DJ Waze. And this song is big. It dropped just yesterday.
on Sunday. As you can get on all social media platforms and on streaming platforms to get this guy's song. That is uh, Last Born. His new jam is I Do Not Know. And uh, we'll probably ask our guest tonight, that is a DJ Black, to make sure that he plays this song right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've marketed all the way through the entire week. And I've told you before, we have the man himself. DJ Black in the bill. Ding up next. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Joshua Koko, and this is the Handlock Podcast. And we are also at studios, and we're proudly sponsored by Esomart Hypermarket or Supermarket in town. And you can go to these guys for all your shopping, say it groceries, say it appliances, whatever you need, toiletries, you can go to uh, Esomart Hypermarket. And we are at also at studio. And like I told you earlier on, yes, we have the Handlock Podcast t shirts right here, and you can order them at only 35,000 Ghana shillings. Drop in the comments, and we'll definitely deliver them to you wherever you are and we have them in so many colors in black red and white talking about black ladies german like a told the iron we have the man in the fucking building we have d j black what up 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 five five give me five give me five what up man this guy it is almost impossible impossible to get this guy this guy is so busy one of these days literally Thank you so much for coming to Hello Podcast. Uh, I appreciate, man. Are you, a, are you a fan of the show, by the way? Do you yeah, watch the show? I watch. <laughs> you look very good in that t-shirt, by the way. Man, yeah. It's <laughs> the Hello Podcast t-shirt by Josie Joshua Coco. It is what it is, yo. Yeah, man. Okay, how are you doing? How is life, man? You're welcome. How is life? How is everything? Uh, I'm fine. Mm. Life is a bit 50-50. Uh, uh. Yeah. Now, for those who do not know, this guy is actually is an Aringa boy. And mixed with the Mahdi. <laughs> is it true? Some people are telling me, ah, that guy is not a ringa. No, that guy cannot yeah, be a ringa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you from Yumbe? Yumbe, first of all, yeah. Ah. Then Mahdi, second of all, yeah. Who's from where? Uh, my dad uh, is from Yumbe. My mom is from Mahdi. Original. Yeah. But let me ask you a question. Why do you call yourself black? Is it because you're dark skinned? Uh, <laughs> we've, always, <laughs> we've always joked about this guy. He's very black. Where is the inspiration for your name, DJ Black? Uh, I think it keeps on following me. Uh, I remember when I was young, my grandma used to call me in here. Ah, <laughs> I remember those days, yeah? Then, yeah, I, I got to this <laughs> DJ thing. Then uh, my friends told me the name you don't have, mm. love is not good. Call yourself DJ Black. I'm like, oh, wow. okay. What was the first name? Minia. That was the DJ Inia. That was no. the first name. No, <laughs> no, no. <Come laughs> I'm on. looking for like, uh, like it, uh, was, thought, it was yeah. it was DJ Jojo. That's how huh? I used to call oh, myself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. <laughs> now we understand actually you were um, before you actually became a DJ. Mm. You were actually a dancer and you used to dance with a group called the Most Wanted Guys. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you were actually very, very popular as a dancer. Mm. T- tell us about your experience of being a dancer. Um, it's, it's, it's been quite rough uh, to me, though yeah. I was good at it. Um, mm. There are a lot of challenges that come in the dancing industry, yeah. especially down here in West Nile, Arua. Mm. The money is not there. Wow. You, you can't make money in West Nile out of dance. Mm. I've seen, I've had brothers, and right now they are doing their own things. Like yeah. they're, doing, they're, they're, they're surviving on the streets, I get the dancers. Yeah, the dancers. They have moved on with their life, doing different things. Mm. I've seen MCs, I've seen artists who are dancers with me. Mm. But yeah. I guess they succeed, yeah? I wish you all the best. Yeah, I, actually, I, th- I think that's really, to be honest with you, I, th- I think we had this discussion before even having a podcast, yeah. uh, the interview. Uh, it's true, like, there's so many guys who are dancers. And like I, we could mention names, some of them were even your mentors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think currently you make more money in the industry of DJing than them. Yeah, yeah, than, than the money that comes out of dancing. But, but however, though, um, I don't know how you'd explain that. Like, for example, if you said dancing is actually not very profitable. Mm. In 2017, mm. you contested in, um, uh, in a dance competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In sure. uh, Fort Porto, Ramwanza, mm. where you actually won 10 million Ugandan shillings at a very young age. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how was that experience like, man? 10 million. I know. First of all, how did it start from, um, totally start from, started from uh, Arua? Arua, yeah. Pakele. Pake- I mean, actually, Pakele. In, in Ajumani. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that, that is where actually the, the auditions were made mm. and the qualifications and all that. Yeah. Uh, so with, with, with my, with the best of Putin, 
Mm. But the best I've been putting in, as mm. always, I merged as the winner. Now that was in Rwanda for Porto now? No, that was in Ajumani. Ah, so okay. I okay. merged as the winner in dance mm. to go compete Romanja. Wow. Mm. And you came away with like, how many contestants were there, by the way? Wow, there are many. Uh, over 15. Wow. In di wow. Uh, different categories. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you really came with that money. Yeah, man. 10 million money. <laughs> <laughs> this was big. Now, many people in your circle, for example, um, they kind of complained so much about the DJ Black guy. And some people are saying, you know what? We think that DJ Black actually misused. Like, you, you didn't put the money to good use. And, uh, you, well, you, you were a very young kid. We understand, really. Mm -hmm. But they claim that the money, because I remember all those stories back in the days that, oh, the 10 million, Jojo used it, he spoiled it, he messed it up with girls, women, eating <laughs> chips every day out of the 10 million. Tell us exactly what happened and how were you able to use your money anyway? Uh, I love the part where you say uh, <laughs> eating money with the ladies and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of my friends who ate the money are even watching this right now. Wow. And they, wow. Feel, and they feel so sorry. Mm. Yeah, I had a girlfriend by that time. Of course, I have to show my woman love, you know. Yeah. Yeah, of course, no one is going to deny that. And, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to money, money is like a visitor. Yeah. yeah. One day you have it, the next day you don't have it. But what it's, did you... It did what, I, I needed to understand what you actually did with the money so that we don't judge you. Mm. Uh, ah. Was it eaten by friends, like you say? Because, yeah, there were actually rumors that came out that the money you had, a couple of friends, because you were younger then, some mm. of, most of them ate the money that you won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't say they really had the money I won. Yeah. But they motivated me in <laughs> spending, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, what have you learned from that experience? What would you do if you had the 10 million now? Mm. What probably would you have done differently anyway? Um, uh, right now, yeah. actually, the plans I have in my head right now. Yeah need that money yeah i know i once lost money and uh, mm. i want to work hard so that i can recover that money yeah yeah that's nice now mm. with so much of this kind of benefit in the industry of dancing mm. tell us why did you decide to switch into djing now where you were able to make like 10 million if you probably expanded to it maybe now you'd be making um maybe 30 40 50 million mm. but you decided <laughs> to abandon that industry and come to the djing that now we're discussing why did you do that uh one uh was the manipulation i got oh. from uh wow. promoters mm. and uh I, I i remember once i i bust my knee mm. wow. and i had no wow. one to take care of myself not until a friend visited me and talked to me you know mm. you can you can dance for more than 20 years from now but you won't dance for more than 30 years yeah true so i had to sit down and calculate everything yeah you know yeah because i mean uh, okay I've, I've seen people like eddie wheezy really dancing for and making money and all that but i keep keep asking myself really um sustaining dancing like when until you're 40 50 paying school fees out of dancing at that age man it, yeah it sounds but i see people like nimrod dj nimrod who are probably older now <laughs> yeah, but I still yeah, yeah, yeah. Money from <laughs> DJing. it makes a lot of sense yeah 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 sure nice now I needed to understand because when you started out, you were you in DBK DJs. You're still in DBK DJs now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I spoke to a number of DJs, actually. I told you I was making a lot of research about you earlier. Mm. And uh, I understand that a couple of people, including DJ Dranix and Mandezo, did so much for you at the beginning of your career. Which, actually, uh, you started DJing in 2021. Recently. That was when I took everything serious. And this is in 2023. Guys, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not telling you anything wrong. This mother is the biggest DJ. I think you appear on, the, on most of the posters. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so I needed to understand how the influence of DJ Dranix and Mandezo of the DBK DJs, your fellow uh, DJs, how did they help you, you know, in uh, becoming who you are today? Um, I will actually, first of all, I want to thank both of them, yeah. Mandezo and Dranix. Yeah. Uh, Dranix did, uh, most of did the work. A practical work, yeah, most yeah. of the work. Yeah. Mandezo does the talking. He doesn't show you any <laughs> shit, man. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Tells you, do this if you don't do it on your own. Yeah. But he's a good guy, yeah? He's, I, I, I opened my ears to him and uh, I listened. And uh, they have taken the name Black somewhere because uh, I've shown them 
that I really need this. Yeah. I really want to make money out of this career. Mm. Yeah. And I spoke to Dranix and he actually told me that you're a very quick learner, you're a fast learner, and that you really love to, you know, uh, understand, learn new ideas. He told me that there would be times where, when you were beginning, when he was working at Source 5, um, at, by then it was called Source 5? Yeah, Source 5. Um, and uh, he would be working, and sometimes after mixing his things, you would be keenly observing him. And when he leaves, you almost copy the exact things he's doing and even make it better. That's yeah. a nice one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the truth is I had, I would say I had 10 songs I would pray every day. The <laughs> same songs. <laughs> I just, 10 songs I would pray every day. Yeah. Uh, uh, when he makes a transition, I get, I get the two songs, how he did all that. And uh, yeah. where he's doing the transition is where I will do mine. Mm. And then I started doing it with different songs, yeah. trying it with different genres. They yeah. actually say that if you want to be the greatest, you need to copy from the great people, <sighs> and then, that's, then you perfect theirs later, yeah, and then you yeah, become yeah, really yeah. big. Yeah, sure. Now, let's um, dive in really quick in a little bit of controversy now. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a Hardlock podcast. I keep emphasizing every single uh, show uh, that when we get you here, we'd like to understand celebrities like this beyond just the work they do, and that's why we give them this kind of, of opportunity to speak about their life. And one of the things that was quite controversial about this guy was that he was um, in 20, actually during lockdown uh, I was in Barra anyway and uh, this guy was accused by one of uh, Facebook users of actually stealing a phone and uh, so the question we need to understand is uh, whether this is actually something real and how you expect because I know you're a young person no doubt and lockdown was really hard. I'm not saying that you did something. I'm just saying I'm trying to understand the concept. But I need to understand from you. Did this happen? And if it did, why? And uh, what did you learn from this experience, probably? Uh, <laughs> first of all, yeah, I learned a lot of things. Yeah. I learned uh, to make the money out of myself, yeah. by myself, yeah. within myself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, sh goes down at the end of the day mm. everyone fucks up yeah if you don't fuck up we won't learn i fucked up with money i learned my lesson yeah and if i fucked up it's because yeah <laughs> the book was written that day black you're gonna fuck up mm. and if you don't fuck up you won't learn <laughs> wow <laughs> officially black has confirmed what happened and he feels bad about it and think he has learned so much from it and we only hope that uh he Next time, th we all fuck up, like you said, yeah? And uh, it, the best thing is for us to learn from our fucks. Then different levels. All of us fuck up in different levels. Yeah, sure. How did you, trans how did this affect you and um, how did you solve all this problem? Uh, first of all, uh, I believe I'm strong within myself. Yeah. And uh, I've, had, I've had issues, issues before that with family, with shit that goes on, but... Uh, it's it's the kind of heart you have, mm. and uh, it's 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 what derives you to learn something. Exactly. I had, I had a friend, uh, names with health. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah. He helped me a lot uh, mm. during that moment. Mm. I distanced myself from a lot of people. Yeah. Even my mom. Wow. She got to know about it like three weeks. After after that, after that she had gone, and it wasn't me. It was news came from somewhere, and mm. I just told her, "It Doesn't has gone. Happen, it eh? has gone." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy is a, this guy has one of the most amazing attitudes I've ever seen in any of my guests here, and uh, I can assure you, he's doing fantastic so far. This Lady Jam is the Handlock Podcast. You can order this T-shirt or the one Black is wearing. Then so many different colors. There's uh, red, there's white, and there's black. We're selling them off at only 35,000 Ghana shillings. Now you've been wondering, how can we be able to support the show? Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you can support us to make sure that we keep this running every single day. And uh, we're also proudly sponsored by SOM at Hypermarket. You know, you want to groceries, you want to shop with the kids. F this uh, school term moment, please make sure you go to SOM at Hypermarket and you'll be good to go. Now, let's get to the conclusion part of this interview. This guy is so busy while well, actually having this live at this hour and has gigs to do, so we're letting him leave after here to go and do his gigs. Why do you think you, did, uh, DJ Black, is so 
something popular? Um, I guess it, it's the it's the connections you have. Yeah. It's uh, it depends on how you stay with people out there. Yeah. I have I have I have uh, I have a lot of friends. Wow. Yeah. I have I have high class people. I have low class people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, have yeah. their <laughs> don't throw them away. Yeah. Be with them. Even if you're walking on the road, if someone greets you, greet back. Mm. And be humble. I've yeah. been humble since day one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there's a time you told me that you, there's some amount of money that you cannot play with. When I looked at this guy, I was like, you guy, be humble. There was, you told me, man, if I'm not paid this amount of money, man, I'm never entering someone's, st- uh, someone's deck to play, man. Like, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> but it's good to be humble, though. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be humble, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, give respect to everyone, even yeah. a kid. And one day, you never know, you're going to sit in an office where this kid is there. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to attend to you. Mm-hmm. What do you say to people who claim that uh, you are... Like, what, what is the best word? Like, you, you are like soda in every party. You have probably six to seven different artworks every single week you're playing. Well, it's good for business, good for yeah, money. Yeah. But when it comes to aspect of branding, they say uh, when an item is very limited in the market, the value grows. When it's too much, the value you doesn't be very strong. How do you um, react to those kind of people? Um, uh, last month, I think I took a break. Mm. I had I had I had gigs out of Arua, mm. and then I was like, no, let me rest. Uh, I had gigs in town. I'm like, okay, let me just get these gigs in town. Yeah. And I rest, uh, taking this route, long routes, and you know, and it's already a month, a new month. Wow. Uh. I've finished my rest and uh, <laughs> we have geared up. Man is so busy and has so much money. <laughs> that he needs to rest from his gigs. I can assure you this not. No, it's not really I have money. It's mixed the party, yo. I've been stressed. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, by the way. How I don't know how I forgot to talk about the mixed step. You did an amazing job in December. It was December twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Yeah. This guy put an amazing event. And I think I talked about it here on the show. I'm not very sure. But at Coco Palm you did an amazing job. Thanks. And uh how was it like by the way? Uh it was my Second, not second actually, it was my third time doing events. I remember I did the first one at Oluko and uh, man, I was fucked. <laughs> 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 so I, I was like, okay, let's sit down and think about something different. So we came up with a mixtape party. The first one happened at Electra last year mm-hmm. in uh, Feb, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we're like, okay, if, if, if I can get these people, why can't I uh, expand my borders? Yeah. Yeah, I thought of Coco Palm. Mm. I really didn't sleep the whole of last year. Wow, wow. Because wow. you know how co- big Coco Palm is, and uh, Bro, I got scared. <laughs> 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 but thank God, yeah. Mm. Thank God. Did you, did, you, did you actually make the money invested anyway from uh, the, yeah. the event? You need to be able to put money and, you know, make some back and probably yeah. make it back. Yeah, I made my money back. Mm. Uh, I made a profit of. Some good money. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as we conclude this podcast, I want to thank you so much for joining us. DJ Black, you're an amazing guy. And um, now my final question is that you've actually played a lot of gigs, especially last year. Mm. And I'm talking about just not any gig. These are national gigs this guy is playing. This guy played silent discos at Sheraton Hotel in Kampala, at Panamera Bar. All cafe and gulu events are all in this guy's hands, <laughs> most of them. <laughs> what is next for DJ Black? There's a lot you're going to experience the best of me from this year. I'm going to be there for you. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Kade, finally speak to your fans and uh, talk to your camera right there. Talk to your fans and uh, sell yourself. So sell your social media handles. Sell your brand. Go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Thanks, everyone watching this right now. Uh, thanks, Mama. I know you're watching. I just bought you a new smartphone today. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> this is yeah, big. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> you, you bought a new phone? For my mom. Wow, look at this, man. This is awesome. Bro. It's 2023, yeah? Yeah. Um, you can follow me on uh, all my social media platforms. On, on Facebook, uh, you can follow me at Black. It's B L. A space CK 
Yeah, B L A space C K. Why? Why? Why is it space, man? Join those things that it becomes easy for people to find. You talked of branding, right? Yeah, but man, okay, okay, man. I don't know, man. That that doesn't look to be a good branding strategy, especially when people fail to find you on social media. I think they should. That's dangerous. I think mine is easier. Uh, there's an artist who has a nine as a B <laughs> to write black. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go. Yeah, YouTube. YouTube, uh, black still. On Twitter, DJ Black. Instagram, DJ Black. Yeah. Snapchat, DJ Black. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it for our Hardlock Podcast today. We are proudly sponsored by Esomat Hypermarket. And uh, supermarket activity is everything you need to get. Trust me, it is in the middle of Arua town, opposite the former Yasmin Saloon. And also, we are at, also at studios behind the camera, my guy, Joy, and we are here. And everyone, of uh, every single person at also at studios is right here with us, supporting, uh, supporting us. And also, uh, I would like you to know that we have t-shirts now out officially, like I've been drumming your ears throughout the week. We have official t-shirts here, ladies and gentlemen, in different colors of red, black, and white. And ladies and gentlemen, at only 35,000 Ugandan gonna shillings you get yourself one of these t-shirts and i'll update more on how to grab them but you can just drop a comment on face uh, on youtube right now that you would like one of these t-shirts and i'll definitely deliver them to you otherwise for now let's get to a segment where we have dj black with his machines giving us ones and twos right here at also art studios let's go to yemen Welcome to the Hardlock Podcast with DJ Black on Ones and Twos right now, straight out at DBK DJs, also Art Studios. I'm here with Dan River, that's it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, working and don't stop. Is that my idea? Yeah, man. Big up with DJ, DJ Black Boy. So, who wants it? Problem. Black Spider. Problem, you know, say. GPL. We're taking you back in a course for days. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah. 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 Everybody don't dare. Spitter the water to the wall now. Up the room and the beat it. Ale mongo mi adule. Yeah, yeah. You know what we say. Ale mi niri amboro. Yeah, amboro. Say. Orange is my baby. Chandra. Praise the Lord. Uh. Money you ain't carry your madria. And your dibia a amomia. Akuma edu de midria. DJ Black. Hey, all this here is moving. Now we go like. Thank you, Lord, for the free life that pay back. DJ Black. My life now your hands we control. You know what we do at this moment? Halle. What you gonna do? Halle. Yeah, it's a gospel thing, and I'll say. Look at me, babe. Tell you I love you. DJ, DJ. What do you say? Baby, how many times you have to make me feel this way? Valentine is at the corners. Can't you see I'm down on my knees yeah. and I'm begging you because I need you? We're gonna be receiving gifts. Baby, please don't let this stop. You can take your shots from also arts. How many times do I have to tell you I've got you? And that I love you so much and wanna build my whole world around you. A girl didn't know I wanna be the one to protect you. Cause I'm in love with you yeah. What you gonna say? I let me sorry Yeah I let me go What you gonna say? I let me sorry Free boy Adams I let me go I let me They say two wrongs can't make a right DJ Block but baby, I'm right here trying to make things right. Yeah, say. I, it's been two years, I've been sleepless nights. Batman Rokoma on the lens right now. I want it to you here by Jesse my Jesse Joshua, I, also at. I, I promise you there'll be no foes and fights. I'll be the man to give you all the good things in life. I, because I can't get off of you. You know it better that I can get off of you. Yeah, I let me sorry. And the next jam is coming from Last Born. Oh, yeah. I let me 
The last one. Let's go, sir. Like a diamond, I'm quite picky. You are my assignment. I really DJ love the way that you're whining. With your petty, I'm like a Pepe Maria. Uh, uh. Give me some nickel, love it. Eh. Got That's some little money, let me spend it on you. Now I'm feeling love it. Eh. What you gonna yeah. do this Valentine's? I'm telling you. Got a little heart, baby. Pretty with tender, baby. Grenada. Now I'm feeling love. Yeah. Forever I'm feeling love. To this part, I really love the way that you call me boo. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really love the way, way that, that you call me, me babe. You're perfect, oh. Mm-hmm. Baby, you're perfect, oh. And the next one, you know. Hey, you're perfect, oh. Right now, sir. One time, let's go. Listen to this one. I call like I'm on a poly again. Right now. What you gonna do? From the look of things, he na me lele jamalia. Valentine's. Aba ta me yon bam bam ba. Aba ta ma bad man. Aba ta monzi. Yandro do me choni wezaku. Zamba do di ma polo nyakuku. Tu sukiru ka kangeri neko. Odu koru ka kangeri neko. Ndrita di mungu femini chandi fezu mania. He kami le ta masiri neni. What you gonna do? Let's go tomorrow. Hearted people, what do you say? Not a me to Timuka to it through my day. Basil in your candle, Masite, your Corinthiana, Ile Mara, send the berry mood of what we did. Has it in your master, Luri? They met Larry. You know what we do? We the hard luck podcast. You tell a friend to tell a friend to watch. YouTube, you know. It was just my time. Your time right. Chapi kuri chadi masibo. Dandi badani andende. Akafe waku maye dramvaro. What you gonna do? Maku imumi. Yeah. Chapi kuri chadi masibo. Dandi badani andende. You don't know about this one. Akafe waku maye dramvaro. Maku imumi. DJ Ways. DJ Ways on this one. Wrapping it up, we're finishing it up. Yeah. Shout out to all the DJs in Uganda, you know. The last born. <laughs> a brand new jam. <laughs> what if I told you don't have it? <laughs> but you can grab it right now <laughs> from all social media <laughs> platforms. <laughs> Don't sleep, don't sleep. Come out, we have fun. We're telling you, it's done, it's done. We're telling you, 
It's done. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joshua Coco, and this is the Hallock Podcast. That was for you. DJ Black joining us right here on the show. Amazing new music coming through. Like I told you earlier on, Last Born, new piece of music, EP, a lot of things going on. But it is what it is, man. It is the Hallock Podcast. Your t-shirts are here for only 35,000 Ugandan shillings. You can get yourself black, white, or even red, my favorite. That's exactly what I'm wearing right now. Let's meet again next week, ladies and gentlemen. We are at also at studios, and we are proudly sponsored by Esomat Hypermarket, and I'm out.